If you're a voter in the city of Detroit, you'll be faced with a whopping 18 ballot proposals. Six of them are about Wayne County issues. And out of those, several seem to be inspired by the Fecano mess of this past year. So, is this the right way to, to rein in a county executive you think might be uh, up to something That's no good? Absolutely wrong way. You don't make up <laughs> for bad leadership by layering on new laws and changing what should be a pretty good charter. I mean, it's got some deficiencies, particularly on the ethics side of things. Yeah. But these measures don't fix what's wrong. In fact, they just layer on more complications and more bureaucracy. I well, think. I mean, actually what they do is they give the charter, or the, the Wayne County Commission, more say over things like uh, salaries and purchases and things like that. Why isn't that uh, just an appropriate check and balance? Um, you know, there's some ideas in there that are all right, but they, they take the wrong form in these charter amendments. And, you know, uh, they just need some work. You know, possibly a different set of charter amendments phrased differently or uh, could be acceptable, but this is not the set that uh, that should go. Yeah, it, it seems like this charter or this commission is, is constantly trying to find relevance. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, the, the charter itself doesn't give them a whole lot of say over anything, and they constantly sort of sort of try to assert themselves and say, well, wait a second, we are elected to, we ought to have some say over these and that's, things. You know, that's not a bad approach because clearly they need, there needs to be some oversight of the county executive. I'm not um, all that, I don't object all that much to the idea of a line item budget so they can see where he's spending the money rather than giving him a large chunk for this division or this agency and letting him parcel it up because we saw what Fricano did with it in his right. aides. You know, they parceled it up and put it in their pockets. <laughs> and so a little oversight's not bad. But they take what they're doing overall is trying to weaken what the charter calls for, which is a strong, a strong executive, executive form of government. And they're trying to change that into something else. That's a discussion that ought to be had, had in an overall rewrite of the charter. And I think it's a bad idea. I mean, they've been having these budget battles between the commission and the executive for a while. You know, they he does something and they say, this is a power grab by the executive. And he says, I can't manage the budget if I can't do these things. And they do have some budget problems. They need to really, uh, you know, hone in on. Sure. And then part of it is, uh, it's a, it's a crazy structure because he's got uh, the commission and then the functions of the executive, but then there's the Wayne County prosecutor and the Wayne County sheriff who come up in the courts to uh, come up with their own budgets. Right, right. But then the county has to fund. I mean, there's a lot of moving pieces in that, and I think it's really important not to um, upset it. So should we have a charter commission in Wayne County and, and address all this stuff? No, uh, we should have better candidates for office in Wayne County, and we should well. have stronger leadership in county. A charter is only going to make up for so much weakness and so much corruption you cannot charter your way out of that out of the if you put of, the wrong people in office yeah and we keep doing that in, in, in over and over and and the candidates this time uh the, the the challengers to the incumbents were all pretty weak so it, it wasn't like you had a lot of choice in terms and, you know of, it's uh, always that way in terms of change and, and wayne county is kind of a strange beast in and of itself a lot of places where there's uh you know rural areas uh parts of the county aren't incorporated and the county government serves a lot of really key core functions to, of to government. Pick up the trash and stuff, I don't right. think there are any unincorporated parts of Wayne County. Yeah. So they sort of they do the very important law enforcement stuff but then and, and court budget. system and, and yeah. prosecution but then they sort of they sort of these weird filling around the edges other, services. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. the, the politicians we do have, the, the, the leadership we do have basically sells out to the unions, panders to the unions. <laughs> I saw Benny Napoleon, <laughs> the sheriff, yesterday um, urging a no vote on Prop on 2. Prop 2 now, I, saw I was that, thinking yeah. that if Benny ends up as mayor of Detroit right. and Prop 2 or he's passes, a yes vote. Yeah, yeah. 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 If Prop 2 right. passes, he's going to be the one yeah. who regrets he'll have to the most. he'll have to deal yeah. with that, right? Mm -hmm. Although there are amendments to the Detroit Charter on the ballot, the most controversial one is Proposal M, appropriately named, uh, which would exempt adults over the age of 21 from being prosecuted for the possession of less than an ounce of marijuana on private property. Now, I know this is an issue very close to Nolan's heart. He's a farmer uh, in Kentucky, and so maybe this gives you an opportunity for a new well, cash we crop, right? Raise tobacco. Tobacco. <laughs> don't raise you raise tobacco, stop. another red type. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of, of decriminalizing marijuana for a lot of reasons. Reasons. One, I think we spend too much money trying to keep people from their vices in a futile effort. I've never been able to understand why you can go out here as you do several nights a week, get smashed <laughs> on bourbon, but you're going to jail if you do the same thing on marijuana. on marijuana. I think it's absurd, but on this one, we urge a no vote because you don't want conf um, conflicting laws. This should be done at a state level. And we saw with the medical marijuana law 
how, the problems it created when people who thought they were obeying the law end up getting arrested up, because yeah. local law and state law conflict or federal law conflict. We have to have a consistent set of laws. Yeah. Well, and that is an issue. Even if you do it on the state level, uh, you know, like with the medical marijuana, there's uh, federal laws that, that say this is yeah. still illegal. Yeah. Federal law trumps state and local law. Yeah, it's still but a drug that you part, are not legally allowed to sell. Right. Part And part of the idea, though, is, is economic, that if the city isn't going to see, if there's no statute through which the city or ordinance through which the city can uh, in, enforce criminal marijuana, penalties, then they wouldn't be able to benefit financially from fines, etc. The people they bust have to pay. So the idea is if you take away the economic incentive and, you know, anyone who you busted in Detroit would have to go through the state court system um, and the state would get whatever money it is, that without the economic incentive, then you don't have a real strong motivation to go out and bust people. Yeah. And I that's, mean, kind of a, that's kind of an oddball uh, uh, angle. But there are a lot of uh, marijuana related uh, proposals on the ballot around the country uh, this November, and, and I think it's Washington State or maybe Oregon that, that is trying to legalize it uh, altogether. All are we headed in that direction? Well, or? I think ultimately, I think it'll be a long time, but the problem with all these laws, including this one in Detroit and the medical marijuana law in right. Michigan, is that it decriminalizes possession. But not, but sale, not the distribution. distribution. That right. remains in the criminal network primarily. Right. You, if you're going to do one, you have to do the other. You have to find a legal means of doing it. Sure. At the same time, you can't, you, you can't ignore this sort of the big difference between bourbon and marijuana is that, you know, no one really is getting killed in the in the in the rush to distribute and sell bourbon, and, and whereas the drug well, trade because is, it's legal, because it's legal, yeah. because the drug trade is really violent, we don't have an infrastructure that supports a non. Only because we've left distribution in the criminal element, yeah. and that's what we're saying. If you're going to decriminalize one side of it, you have to decriminalize, you gotta decriminalize and now, and now it across the board. You know what? No one's retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs>